Um, hi everyone, my name is Deb Jani. I'm Nicole, and we're program managers on the SharePoint team. Um, the name of this session is, I've got a SharePoint site, what can I do with it? Well, you can do a lot with SharePoint. SharePoint is a powerful and multifaceted product, and there's many ways to use it and many ways to think about it. And here is one of them. Every SharePoint site has three fundamental pieces of technology that you can leverage. These are pages, lists, and libraries. If you think about it, SharePoint is kind of like a meal. You have the appetizer, the mains, and the dessert. And you don't need to eat all of it, but boy, if you do, that's a good meal. And yes, with SharePoint, you can eat dessert first. So in this session, we're going to show you how you can set up a SharePoint site super easily, then hit the ground running with pages, lists, and libraries, and demo some cool features along the way. For this session, Nicole and I are going to play two characters. So Nicole is going to be Lynn. She leads a team of employees at Contoso who are uh, investigating the market opportunities for drones in Southeast Asia. And I am going to play Joni. I am the legal expert of, on Lynn's team. Got that? OK, let's get into this. Perfect. Good. All right, so as you can see here, this is our SharePoint home, and this shows all of the sites that we're subscribed to and are members of. Now, as Joni, or as Lynn, I want to make sure that I have a centralized place where my team can collaborate on documents, post updates, and really use as a one-stop hub. So creating a site from here is super simple. If you go to the upper left-hand corner and click Create Site, you'll automatically see a pop-up, and you'll see two different options, team sites and communication sites. Team sites are great for where all of the users on the site are adding content. So maybe they're working on files together, or maybe they're posting news updates or status updates. Communication sites, on the other hand, are useful for when you have a small number of core content creators and a large number of readers. So if you're broadcasting a lot of information, public updates, news stories, that sort of thing, great option for that. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be using a team site. Now you'll see the option to add a site name and a site description. So we're exploring market opportunities in Southeast Asia. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And it will automatically verify if this site name is available within your organization. Now I'll add the site description of exploring market opportunities. And you'll also have the option to select how sensitive your data is as well as the privacy settings. Now for the privacy settings, you'll see an option for private or public. Private will mean that the information on the site is only for the members, while public is available to anyone in your organization. Let's keep it on private for now, and we'll go ahead and click Next. And at this stage, you could add any additional members or owners to your site. I'll go ahead and add Joni, who will be working on my team. And I'll go ahead and add a couple other folks to our group as well. Now, once I am able to do this, we go ahead and click Finish. And in just a matter of seconds, we'll see that we'll have a brand new SharePoint site. Super simple, huh? On this home page, we can see that there are a few web parts already established. And this will be a great spot for us to build up our website. Now, web parts are the building blocks. And this will allow you to really make your content shine. We can go through a few of them here. So we have our news web part in the upper left corner, and this is where if you want to publish any sort of information, status updates, trip reports, um, so that all the folks on your site can see updates. In the bottom left-hand corner, we can see our activity web part, and this shows the recent activity from members on our site. In the upper left, we have the quick links, and so we just created a team site. If you want to learn more about that, you could click on that pinned item, as well as learning how to add a page, which we'll do in a moment. And then lastly, we have the documents library web part here. And this is where you can store any of your files. And I think this is a great place to reference the first fundamental point of SharePoint, document libraries. Now, this is a secure place for you to store all of your files so that your team can collaborate effortlessly. Um, and you can access your files from any place at any time. Let's go ahead and add a, web, uh, add a document since I don't see one in there. So we can access this either by going to see all on the web part or clicking on Documents in the left-hand sidebar. And uploading a document is super simple. We can either do a drag and drop or through the Upload button. So I have a team charter that I want to share and have visible to the rest of my team. So we just go ahead and drag it in. 
and it will automatically show up there. Now if we go back to our home page, we can take a look at that same web part that we had seen empty before, and now we can see that the file shows up there. The second fundamental that Deb Johnny mentioned were pages. And pages are a persistent artifact that you can use to communicate content on your site. News posts, in particular, are a special type of page, and those are using an intelligent distribution system so that readers that are interested in a particular type of news will automatically receive that notification and update when that news is published. Creating it again, super easy. If you have a brand new news web part, you can add it through there. We can also go to new here, and we see page and news posts. Let's click news posts. Now, I want to communicate the key checkpoints that are coming up for our team. And so I'll go ahead and title this key checkpoints, and I'll go through a few of the web parts that you can use to make your site and your pages beautiful. <clears throat> there are a number of first and third party web parts that are available, and so let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the most popularly used ones. Here is the file viewer, and so that team charter that we had just uploaded, we can make this visible on the page so that they don't have to navigate to another location in order for people to view it. So let's go ahead and click on that. And using Power Word Online, we can automatically see that right on our page. We also want to communicate what those actual key deadlines are coming up. So if we go ahead and add a new text web part, we can indicate that we have the upcoming deadline. The nice thing about the text web part is that it retains all of the formatting uh, that you can post and copy and paste in, as well as do it right in the web part itself. So if I wanted to bold this text, I can do that. If I wanted to italicize the first part of the text, I can do that too. Lastly, let's go ahead and add a people web part, and we want to recognize the sponsor for our market research project, so I'll go ahead and type people here. And this will access the directory for your organization so that anyone that you need to indicate as a key contact or want to recognize can automatically put here. Now before I go ahead and publish this news page, I want to make our title region beautiful. So I'll go ahead and first change the layout to color block, and then I'll also upload an image. So you can upload images from a variety of areas. You can do it from your local computer. You can do it from other areas on your site. Um, you can even see those that are approved by your organization. For the purposes of this, I'll do a web search, and this will use the power of Bing, and in this case, let's go ahead and type in Asia Scenery. And all these images are covered under the Creative Commons license, so you know that you're approved to use this on your site. Let's go ahead and pick this mountain range. And once that uploads, we can also drag it so we can set a focal point. With that, we'll go ahead and publish this. And we can see the notification up here that it's been published. And if we go back to our home page, we can see that it shows up in the news web part. With that, I'll hand it over to Dev Johnny, who will be playing Joni as a new user to this site. Hey, so I'm Joni, and I land on this team site for the very first time, and I can see the intro news post right there in the news web part on the homepage. So I click into it. This news post looks awesome. That image is great. Team charter looks good. Deadlines are good. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Engaging with pages through commenting and liking is one of the best ways of letting page authors know that their work is valued. Now, Joni remembers that she had a great conversation at lunch with a coworker, Alan, about the deadlines for this project. And it's right here in this news post. So she wants to direct Alan's attention to this post. And what better way to do that than at mention him in the comment section? SharePoint pages will soon support the ability for you to at mention your coworkers in the comment section. And it's super easy. All you need to do is type the at symbol, and this gives you some suggestions from the get-go, or, or it should. And as you type out your coworker's name, you can see it come up. You can select it. Of course, you can just mention the first name only if that's what you want to do. Type out the comment and hit post. And that's going to notify Alan that uh, he was mentioned in this news post by Joni. 
So, so far, we've spoken about pages with a special focus on news, and we've spoken about document libraries. Let's now talk about the third piece, SharePoint lists. SharePoint lists are a great way for you to organize your team's data in a structured way. Lists can have many different column types, multiple views, and you can sort and filter as necessary. Lists take different shapes and forms based on what they're being used for. In this case, Joni wants a list to track items from her team that need her legal review. So let's go ahead and create this list. Joni goes back to the home page of this site, and she can go to the now familiar news but, uh, new button, and you can see a bunch of options here, including news posts and pages, which Nicole already spoke about. In this case, we are going to click on list. And so Joni is going to give this a name, let's say re review. And you see this checkbox here. This determines whether the list shows up in the left nav right there. Joni does want the list to show up there, so she's going to leave that box checked and hit create. And very quickly, this is going to create a canvas where Joni can start building out the list that she needs. Joni needs three columns for this list. The one is title, and that's already there by default, and she needs two more columns. First, a link to the article that she needs to review, and the second is the status of the review. So let's go ahead and build those two remaining columns. For the hyperlink column, she just clicks on the Add Column button, and you can see we have a bunch of out-of-box options for column types. Um, so she's going to select Hyperlink and just say Link to Article and hit Save. And this updates the list immediately. And then for the second column, she's going to do the same thing, click on Add Column, but in this case, she goes to the Choice option, and she's going to say Status. Um, I have, okay, I'll just type it out. So there's four, four choices for the status. There's not started, there's in progress, there's approved and denied. And she wants to set a default value as well. In this case, she just wants to set the default value to not started. And she can go ahead and hit save. And that adds the choice column as well. I mean, the status column, which is of choice type. So. And now Joni's teammates can just go ahead and add items to this list for her to review. But a few days ago, a teammate had already emailed her an item to review. That was before this list existed. So Joni just wants to go and add that item to this list for completeness. And that's super easy, too. She just needs to hit the New button in this list view. And the right panel comes up that she can populate with the information she needs. So title is Review for Add. This is a document that she needs to review for an ad that she, uh, for an ad that a coworker wanted to run. Um, this is the link to the item, and the status is not started by default, as you can see, and she can hit save. Going forward, Joni's teammates can just add item to the items to this list in a super simple way, and Joni can go ahead and review them, and so this collaboration happens in a very transparent way. Now, Joni, like many of us, is frequently on the go. And she doesn't always have her desktop or laptop on her. But she does always have her mobile device. And on the mobile device, she has her SharePoint mobile app. So let me show you the app. I need to go ahead and change the device, so this might take a little bit. Let me know when you can see, see my device on the screen. Yeah? Okay, good. Um, here Joni is in the SharePoint mobile app. So the SharePoint mobile app natively supports pages and lists and will very soon support document libraries as well, meaning you can carry your SharePoint world in your pocket anywhere, but with a unique mobile perspective. So for those of you familiar with the app, you'll notice that the tab structure has changed. We now have a single central find tab that brings together your sites, your people, your files, and lots more. And if you click into a site, I'm just going to look at the North America site for now, you can see that the sites render beautifully and responsively in mobile, and you can navigate around the site through the left nav right here. But here is an example of one way in which the SharePoint mobile app brings a unique perspective to SharePoint. 
in the Find tab next to every site, you have this ellipses. And when you tap on it, it brings up an easy access sheet. And from here, you can jump to site contents without having to navigate into the site. On mobile, you really want to navigate as little as possible. Your thumb did not sign up for this life of hard work. And so this is a feature for you and your thumb. When you tap on files, you can go to the document libraries in this site. Let me actually show you the site that I was just added to, the Southeast Asia market site. So when I tap on files, you can see the file that was uploaded to the site, the Team Charger. When you tap on news, you can see the news post in this site, which is the key checkpoints. And when you tap on lists, you can see the list that I just created. So SharePoint, with SharePoint, it's very easy for you to create a site. And we've shown you some use cases for pages, lists, and libraries, and how to access them anytime and anywhere. SharePoint is really the digital home for all your content, allowing you to collaborate and engage with your coworkers in a seamless, modern way. So that's it from us today. Hope you enjoyed this session. I'm going to show you our um, evaluation link. Please go ahead and evaluate us, and we'll hang around here for a little bit if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you.